fellow classic TV fans, back for an encore appearance. It's the return of Hank Garrett. In lending a hand to help promote his book, From Harlem Hoodlum to Hollywood Heavyweight, I've had the extreme pleasure to better get to know Hank and his lovely wife and talented co-author, Deanna Marie Smith. As you will hear, these two are a class act. Happily, Deanna drops in from time to time during the interview. In this episode, we take an even deeper dive into Hank's experiences during the making of Car 54, Serpico, and Three Days of the Condor. Talk about some great stories. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podcast, the notorious, I should say the notoriously friendly, Hank Garrett. Hey, Hank. Hey. Is the check in the mail? Hank said, I'm going to pay you big bucks if you put me on your show again. He did, honestly. <laughs> but <laughs> Oh, God. Hey, you know, it's great. Uh, you are one of my encore appearances on Retro TV Radio. Thank you for having me. I'm flattered. Well, I just couldn't get enough of you. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been great. You know, I've really gotten to know this man, folks. And talk about the genuine article. He is, uh, he is gracious, kind, witty, tells the dirtiest jokes I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and believe me, when they say I got a million of them, I think he just might. But with that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> right. So, buddy, I ordered that book of yours from Harlem Hoodlum to Hollywood Hero. Wait a minute. Heavyweight. Oh, oh no, wait. That's what I called it. Oh, I should. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> because anybody that reads it is just going to go, wow, what a heroic journey. <laughs> You've seen it all, Hank. Well, there's still a lot more to see. Yes, I agree. Well, as a fan of the book, I'm going to tell you, it kind of sparked my interest or it put me on a, an autobiography kick. Uh, you started up something in me. Because this book just, it reads itself to you, which is masterful, you know? Well, I'll tell you, I, all I did was dictate uh, a lot of things that happened. But my wife, Deanna Marie, she put it all together. You know, I just sat and said, yeah, when I was so-and-so and so-and-so. And she said, wait a minute. You were wrestling at what age? I said, well, that caused problems. I was wrestling at 16, but I couldn't get a license until I was 21. So they had to change my birth certificate, which some people I knew were able to do. <laughs> and so I became 10 years older and I actually was wrestling pro when I was 17 years old, but was listed as 27. I cannot imagine. Yeah. How did you get away with that? <laughs> 10 years? Uh, yeah, because I was big, I was pumping irons. I started pumping iron when I was 13. Oh, you before then. I got involved in the martial arts when I was 11. Uh, in my old neighborhood, a gentleman came through. And his name was Min Pai, who was from Korea. And he started training kids, hoping that their families would want to get involved. So I, I was training Taekwondo Hapkido when I was 11 years old. Yeah, and I mean, there's there's just so many facets. This book, you're you're the di most diverse person uh, as far as your interests and what you've what you've done is just it's it's amazing. You, you've sprouted in so many different ways, Hank. And I obviously I was also thinking it must be that baby face of yours that was so prevalent in well. three days. Three days of the Condor. It's like now that's a baby face if I ever saw one. Poor little mailman. <laughs> yes. It's like, no, no, you don't want to meet that guy. 
<laughs> so, yeah, maybe that was that intimidating, you know. The heavy helped you add some years on, too, I would think. Yeah, I, uh, when I got the audition for the, the movie, uh, I met the director, and he sat, he said, you're a martial artist. And I said, uh, yes. And I said, do you want me to get do a demonstration for you he said no 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 just tell me about yourself and i did and he said oh, you're the mailman <laughs> he said you are the oh god he just went on and on and on and he was a uh, sydney pollock and it was just one of the best times of my life to be treated the way he treated me and uh and and, and robert redford as well Redford was such an amazing guy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you made him pay for that, too, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Accidentally, please. How dare you be so amazing? <laughs> <laughs> I got your Sundance kid right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, no fighter. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, well, yeah, I wanted to talk about that movie, and but just for a second, I'd like to go back to the wonderful book, because I know your beautiful wife, Deanna Marie Smith, helped you co-write this piece. Yes, absolutely. If only I could interview her, because you're just boring. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hold on, here she is. Perfect. Hello, Pat. Deanna Marie, how are you, dear? I'm great. And you want to know why, uh, when, I, when I met Hank, she did a personal appearance and people came up and said, oh, we want to know more about your life. And I thought, uh, oh, I could help there. I do some writing. And so uh, she started dictating things. And before I knew it, I had like a thousand pieces of paper around. <laughs> and I thought, it, this is too much. You know, it just couldn't. Uh, I think he's full of it. <laughs> and I really, I really did it. I'd say, how could you have done this and this and this at the same time? And I had to apologize, Pat. I really did. I still, <laughs> I, I, well, look. How the heck you got that all in a cohesive, flowing form, it, it, it's masterful. And that's what I called it, you know, when I did my autobiography book review, because like I said, this one kicked off a kick for me to read as many autobiographies as I can get my hands on. And I swear, since reading it, I've probably read 11 or 12 different uh, classic TV and celebrity uh, autobiographies, and yours is still my favorite. Well, thank you. You know, how many books have you written, Deanna? How many, how many of these incredible autobiographies do you have under your belt? Oh, I don't have any. Here's just the first one. I do, I, I am a writer, but I've written out, you know, other things. So this is kind of a new thing for me. Well, I rest my case. I, my point being is you came right out an expert the way the book flows, and especially, I don't know whose idea it was to make the, the rapid-fire chapters at the very end, but I just, I'd never, I've never seen a better way to wrap up a book. Um, really a compliment, Can you have just that? Really. It's just true. When we worked on the book, uh, she truly would stop and say, now hold on a minute. You were doing what at the same time? And I was in high school when I was wrestling pro. And she said, and no one knew. I said, yeah, yeah one of the teachers, uh, he was watching wrestling on Tuesday night. And I walk into his class and said, uh, he said, uh, would you come up uh, here? And I did, and he said, I don't want you to deny this because it's you. Were you wrestling Tuesday night on television? <laughs> uh, I said, yeah. He said, you're a kid. He said, but boy, did you fight. <laughs> I said, yeah. I learned how a long time ago on the streets of Harlem. It was probably before the, like, uh, the masked 
marauders or the masked invaders uh, got popular in the sport so you could hide your identity yeah i i couldn't and so uh, <laughs> it was all hank <laughs> yes exactly uh, well i i have to hand it to, to dm that's that's what our friends call the anna marie <clears throat> yeah i i have to just like i said give you major kudos dm on the on the writing of this book and, and getting his recall in order because you know i'm i'm a few years younger in my recall, I can't put things in chronological order to save me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she did. Uh, I went through my life year by year, and she sat there and just selected all the interesting stuff. And uh, I didn't think any of it was really interesting. It was just my life. I didn't find anything interesting about being out in the street fighting. You know, it was another day. Well, let's face it. The the book is much more dramatic than what Hank just described. <laughs> 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 you know, all I was doing was going to high school, wrestling every now and then, getting a brawl here and there. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> like I said, I, I see it as a movie or I see it as a, a Netflix series. It would be so easy. It's done. It's almost scripted anyway. And uh, from my mouth to the network head's ears, please. Well, Netflix has it right now. What? Yes. Wow. Well, we don't want to count our chickens, but it's in the bag. <laughs> Oh, well, I, uh, Harlan, who is my publicist that you know quite well, uh, he submitted the script and, uh, someone wrote up, uh, 10 chapters of screenplay. Yeah. Really? So Netflix has it right now. But Harlan mentioned, uh, he said, uh, just forget about it for the time being because there are so many, so many shows submitted to netflix but he was able to get it in there well there you go the seed is planted and yes anybody that's familiar with this business is like that's all you do you plant the seed you find another place to plant the seed and you keep planting seeds and eventually one of them's going to germinate right absolutely but I want to talk a bit about your first TV role, because I know I have a lot of listeners that are very interested, well, in classic TV. And Car 54, where are you? Uh, last surviving member, and yet it's still so remembered by so many, and even those in law enforcement. As a matter of fact, you had a bit of an experience at the Hollywood show just a few weeks back in regards to that. Yes, uh, we did an autograph show uh just a few weeks ago, and a police officer and his wife showed up. They had flown up from Florida to come meet us, and they brought us gifts, uh, souvenirs of the, from the police department, and they were talking, and, and they said something about, how would you like to come to New York? Well, next thing I know, uh, they made us an offer, they're going to pay our way, our fare, and hotel. We're flying to New York on uh, April 27th for the police department. Call 54 is the favorite show of the police department. And so we're going to be there, and they asked that we bring this, uh, books and uh, photographs of Car 54, different sh photographs I have, and... The wonderful thing is that a good portion goes to disabled American veterans. Yes. Uh, so, so far, the Anna Marie and I have raised over $61,000 for the disabled vets. And we do this everywhere. Anytime there's a, an autograph show or an appearance, uh, we make sure that uh, proceeds go to them. Yeah, and that's wonderful. And, and I commend you guys for that. Does it... Is it... I mean, did it just take you off guard, though, Hank? I mean, it's like, you're talking about a show that was on 60, is it 60 plus years ago? Ooh, I don't, I don't have my math on that one. 
Yeah, 1961, 62. And you're like, what are you talking about? None of you were born yet. <laughs> <laughs> Classic TV. You got to love these networks that are keeping those shows alive. Yeah, when I met Matt Hyken, who created Car 54, uh, I sat opposite him, you know, and uh, I was a cop. I had joined the police force for about a minute and a half. <laughs> and I got, they called me and they said, listen, uh, they're doing a new show. Uh, why don't you, you know, try to get, uh, we'll try to get you into to an audition. A friend of mine who was a comic, I, I was working the Catskills as a comedian. Uh, I wound up being Tony Bennett's opening act for four years. Diverse. So, uh, <laughs> go to the audition. I sit opposite Matt Hyken, who created the Bilko show, the Martha Ray show, so many incredible shows. And I sat down and he just looked at me and said, you're Ed Nicholson. And I said, oh, no, 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 I'm Hank Garrett. <laughs> He said, just the kind of dummy I'm looking for. Oh. He <laughs> said, Nicholson is the character I want you to play on Call 54. <laughs> Didn't you do your homework? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I just went, oh, gosh. <laughs> so he said, okay. He said, I want to uh, get measured up for a new uniform for you and on and on and on. He said, you're going to spend a good portion of time in the locker room muscle posing. And that's what I did the most of the time of the show. And uh, that hiking was incredible. Just an amazing, amazing guy. Oh, he's a genius, for sure. And what... I and how great for that to be your first um, your first step into television and had to be on such a, a huge hit and ultimately a classic series. Um, it's astonishing. It's that rags to riches in a sense. I, and it got you off the streets as a beat cop, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 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 too many of Hank's old friends were recognizing him, too. Uh, there's a little spoiler. Can't help it. <laughs> oh, yeah. The guys in the neighborhood called me the hoodlum cop. There you go. <laughs> oh, an alternate title for your next book. <laughs> the hoodlum cop. <laughs> Harlem right? heavyweight, the hoodlum cop, and I've never changed, or something like that. Um, <laughs> wow. But I, I remember you were telling me a story um, a couple months ago about Car 54 success got you guys into the Thanksgiving parade. Oh, yes. And, and something interesting happened along the way. You want to share that? Oh, yes. We're in the parade. And I'm telling everybody I've uh, met, we're going to be in the Thanksgiving Day Parade. And we're driving in the car, and suddenly the car went dead. <laughs> now we get out of the car, and we're pushing car 54, and everybody yelled, Perfect! <laughs> Perfect! Look at the idiots pushing the car. You're supposed to be driving it. But it couldn't have been scripted any better. No, not at all. Not at all. Except how far did you have to push it is the question. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I did most of the pushing. <laughs> Somehow, I'm looking, take a look at Ed Gwynn back in those days, folks, and it looks almost as though he was strong enough to roll down a window, but... Uh, <laughs> but to push a car, uh -uh. <laughs> I think Joey Ross maybe would have been a, been a bit more of a help. But yeah, if they would have hitched the car to Joey, it would have been fine. He's like, ooh, 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 I'm moving, I'm moving, ooh, ooh, we're moving. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> So who was in the car? Now, I'm guessing, obviously, those two characters, you. Yes, it was Al Lewis. Oh, well, there you go. Shelby Ross, Fred Gwynn, and myself. Oh, man. What a picture. I, I can see it. I can see it. And I'm wondering, are there any pictures? There must be somewhere out there. 
floating around. I looked everywhere, saw nothing, found nothing. I mean, everybody, the people that were watching the parade was screaming. <laughs> and somebody yelled, boy, is that difficult. There you go. <laughs> it's no joy ride for you. You guys are in character. Ready? Go. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. Speaking of being in character, how's this for a segue? You next landed parts in these blockbuster classic films with some big screen legends. Did you ever have any difficulty in the transition from TV to major motion pictures? It was very easy for me working with such top flight talents. Uh, all I did was follow suit. I watched some of the most amazing people acting and could see that they weren't. They became the characters. I worked with James Earl Jones. I was co-starring with him on a series. But I had, I had worked with him once before. And everything was so easy, so smooth. And I was kind of teaching for, for a little bit about how to become the character, right. giving the character life. Where did the character come from? What kind of life did the character have before they became the police officer or the convict? What brought them to this point? And it, it worked for me, and uh, it did help other actors that I worked with. It worked, as you said, for the part, um, obviously, because you're the iconic mailman. You're the uh, Muscles Malone. I mean, you're <laughs> a very recognizable, dare I say it, hoodlum, villain, whatever. Um, All I did was relive the moments of my life on the streets. Mm. And, yeah, uh, there were some very tense moments, uh, very del some very delightful moments in my life, but there was not much fun uh, when you have nothing to eat and very little clothing to wear, and it's midwinter. So, yeah, but, and I was able to use all those moments in something else constructively that's what's so great it's um and believe me folks <laughs> hank has just merely scratched the surface based on what he just told you <laughs> it's uh you know reading the book it was like well of course you could bring all of that <laughs> right Yes. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> but of course, <laughs> this is your man. <laughs> you want a bad oh. man? Here he is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course, in the past months, I've learned that, of course, the opposite is true when it comes to Hank Garrett. He is one of the uh, kindest, most giving people on the planet. Um, but you were saying that, that being able to get into character and bring that character and the, uh, own the character, and yes, I... <laughs> I can only imagine a guy that grew up with, you know, picket fence, um, beachside residents from uh, Martha's Vineyard coming in to play that role. It probably would not have worked unless he was just the over the top good actor. Oh, there is there are some outstanding talents that I've run into. Wow. That I marvel at their performances. I truly, truly do. You were saying you stayed in character just so that you could go in your mind. I don't believe who I'm working with. I'm going to break Robert Redford's nose. How could it get any better than this? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, gosh. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I'd seen these films, but I was much, much younger. I was pre-teens, as a matter of fact, so I didn't remember a darn thing. And so I rewatched them recently and... Uh, they still hold up, buddy, your performances especially. Um, and again, with Serpico, it's brief, but it's it's unmistakably Hank. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want a piece of this, Frank? <laughs> oh, God. Yes, I remember. <laughs> Pacino's like... Yeah, you said, no, uh, no, 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 no. In fact, I can't... 
he asked me, he said, oh, where do you work out? And I told him. I said, well, why don't you come down and Al and Al, you know, we'll work out together. He came to the gym. He stood in the doorway and he just watched. And I walked over. I said, Al, come on. He said, no, 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 thank you. Everybody's so sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's what happens when you work out. <laughs> He said, yeah, uh, no, this is not for me. And he was. <laughs> now he just pays somebody to work out for him, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I, how many reps did I do today, Jim? Hmm. Yes. Let's throw a couple more sets in there tomorrow. and. Uh... Yeah, the one that I'm so tired. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, my gosh. Well, hey, you got to hand it to him. At least he went there. You know? Yes. <laughs> and you could have just said, hey, here he is. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> Wait, can he go? <laughs> and he's going to stay little if he doesn't get in here and throw some weight around. <laughs> the funny thing is that the Anna Marie, we work, we work out together. She goes to the gym with me. And she goes to the gym on her own, and she does all the aerobic work. She'll put in an hour and then goes and works out with me pumping iron for another half hour to 45 minutes. She is amazing. Based on her nickname, she's the Red Warrior. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is she still there with you? Yes, I am, Pat. And you want to know how I got that name? Yes. It was given to me by Hank, and we hadn't known each other very long, but she called me red warrior and there's a story that goes my dad but i know that he puts red bitch warrior in there in it to his to his uh, he doesn't let me know that though but i know <laughs> oh no <laughs> uh, oh yeah <laughs> well no i mean hank don't do that that's <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 no. Don't, no. don't, don't do that. <laughs> she, no, I would never do that. I'd, I'd be careful if I were you. And uh, But the great thing is she's a warrior that uh, stands behind her man, and it's just, you guys are the best. They're such a great couple. I'm telling you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I wanted to ask you also about, um, I think we've all heard plenty about the three days of the condor, but you know, when I watched it again, I saw Max von Sydow. Oh my God, I forgot he was in this. Uh, yes. And it was like, oh my gosh, I got to ask Hank about what it was like working with The Exorcist. <laughs> oh, wow. Very, very nice, very quite reserved. Uh, did not have any deep conversations. I was hoping to, but he was very private. Uh, we were ready to go to work. He was, we knew oh, we knew our lines, we knew our motivation, and that was it. And that was the only thing that we had to do with each other. But I have tremendous respect because I knew this man's incredible background. Yes. So I was quite flattered to be working with Max von Sydow. Like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, that's how you pronounce it, folks, by the way. Sorry. Um, <laughs> classic TV, that's me. Classic films, yes, I'm that too, but <laughs> <laughs> I got to get all the names right. Garrett, Garrett, got it. Okay. <laughs> that's all I need. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nicholson. Uh, no, it's Gary. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, the man. guys I grew up with were saying to me, why are you always playing cops? <laughs> or mailmen. What's the difference? <laughs> yeah, well, when I bid the mailman, I said, oh, my on, where'd you get the machine gun? <laughs> <laughs> Did you keep it? Can you bring it home? <laughs> oh, let me tell you, uh, someone made me an offer for the, for the machine gun. I said, it's not my machine gun. I don't sell machine guns. I use it in the act. Whoa. 
Can you find out where we can get it? <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it really did fit the character. I mean, it was almost as though you had to have it. I mean, of course, the mailbag and the government pens were a part of it, oh, too. Yes. <laughs> yes. But that machine gun was nasty. <laughs> <laughs> that was just nasty. <laughs> and not only that, I'm going to backhand Faye Dunaway while I'm at it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, award-winning fight scene in that film, folks. Look it up. Watch it again. You know, really, Hank wins. <clears throat> not in the end, but Hank wins, at least during it. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh i had no idea uh, the fight scene would create uh such a following because uh i wound up winning the new york film critics award for best fight scene in film and then we were we were taken to vegas and i received an award there for best fight scene in film ever there you have it. If that's not motivation to look it up, folks, I don't know what is. <laughs> I mean, so, hey, wow. it's true because it's not overly choreographed. It's truly, no, not, it is a, it's a full on aggressive. I mean, obviously, you guys went over how to miss the fire poker, but uh, <laughs> or how to miss with the fire poker, I would assume. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yes. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Let's miss with this, Bob, shall we? <laughs> and then, of course, the whole story about him saving your eyesight with the coffee. That was something. Yeah. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, uh, at one point, he was using a double, and I, I threw a kick uh, that's supposed to hit him on the side of the head. And so my point of I was going to do to aim for the shoulder. And I said to him, uh, look, uh, I want you to, you know, get ready to, to just duck out of the way of the fall to the side because I, I do have a fast kick. He said, you'll never touch me. <laughs> I said, I'm going to throw it full out. He said, I won't be there. I said, please, I don't want to take a chance on hurting you. He said, let me tell you something, Hank. I've yet to get hurt doing any of the stunts, okay? You're not going to touch me. Action, I throw the kick and I catch him right on the shoulder and I drive him right across the room. <laughs> and he comes over and says, damn, you're fast. And I said, damn, you're slow. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, so I, I apologize for making contact. He said, no, it's my fault. Wow. Well, and you could have capped it with, and there's always a first time, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, <it's> exactly. <laughs> uh, Welcome to show business. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Well, buddy, I got to say, this has just been a great visit. I think I'm just going to keep having you back every season. <laughs> Thank you. For all these great stories. And um, you're a gentleman. You're a treasure. Thank you. And, uh, you know, we all love you. Everybody, I say, oh, I, I'm, I'm buddies with Hank here. And they went, oh, the mailman? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. I am so impressed by the Henry. I'm serious. I'm, I'm not... Me too. Just, but, oh boy, the stuff that she's done. I'm an international clothing designer and just... Yes. Wow. Anyway. Uh, oh, no. I'm getting to know her and getting to know you both. I'm equally impressed. I, I'm sorry, Hank. Maybe just a, a hair more impressed with her, but, you know, that's <laughs> that's just the way of it. Um, yes, thank you. But, no, she's so wonderful. Totally on the ball. Both of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Paul. I'm looking forward to hearing about how you're going to go out to New York and how the car is going to break down and you and Deanna are going to be pushing it <laughs> <off>. <laughs> Just like old times. <laughs> yes. 
In fact, they're picking us up in a replica of coffee. <laughs> That's what you said. That's why I envisioned it. It's like, uh oh. <laughs> Careful now. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right, my friend. We will talk to you again. Pat, thank you so much. My pleasure, buddy. There you have it. Be sure to get your copy of From Harlem Hoodlum to Hollywood Heavyweight by going to hankgarrett.biz. That's with two R's and two T's. You can purchase an autographed copy by emailing Deanna Marie Smith, whose address is listed in the description. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to this podcast and leave me a positive rating and review. You'll also find my social media links in the description as well. I'm your host, Pat McCormack, and thanks for listening to Retro TV Radio. Thank you.